Hey folks, I'm Tim, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at getting these doors hung. Fortunately, a YouTube pal you may well know of uh, sent us over these, so we're gonna use them to get our doors hung and I'll show you how I did it. Stick around, we'll make it start. Okay, so far we've been managing with no doors. Uh, today's the day where we do something about that. So I've managed to get one door fitted off camera a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm working through all the bedrooms. Is it just me, or does everyone else hate hanging doors? Uh, it's just, you need far too many tools, even though you think you only need a chisel or a router and a screwdriver. Anyway, we, uh, we are halfway through. So our first door went textbook went completely to plan. Uh, we didn't film that one because we thought that was our warm up. Now we've really messed up our second door. Uh, I'll miss this one out and we'll start on the next one. I won't lie, it will probably be a good while before we get any hardware on here, but all the handles and latches are ready. This is pretty even all the way up, but once these are taken off and painted, I might just pack out this bottom hinge just a little bit. So that one's done, uh, this one, Took a little bit more fiddling. I think my linings were just a little bit off. So last but not least on the bedrooms is this end one. It's a smaller 27 inch door. 638, 686, whatever it is. So I said that I hate doing doors. I do, however, it does get a lot easier once you've got a jig. Robin has sent me a bunch of goodies. Back at Christmas, we all met up for a, a Christmas meal in London and Robin handed me a, a bit. Uh, so this is a template bit. Uh, so I knew that at some point I was going to try the jig. So I've got both size jigs, I think one's 76 mil and the other one is the 100 mil or slightly bigger one. So they should fit 99% of your hinges in your house. This one is a lot easier than a huge great long skeleton jig that you've got to strap on the whole door. This is just literally per hinge, you hold it in place or clamp it in place uh, and it's super easy. But where it gets a little bit harder is where you've been a numpty and put your architrave on because we were just trying to rush ahead. So a lot of these were just the linings, which means I could have, I can put the jig onto the lining and route out the inside in here. Instead, I'm gonna to have to go back to my method, which is to mark up our hinges and then freehand it. So this is a bit of a giveaway, uh, my door story stick. I used this to set my door linings because we were setting them on top of our finished floor. So this is the exact height of our door lining. So because of that, I kept it and I've marked it up for our hinges. So our top one's six inches down, bottom one's nine inches up. Um, that's kind of what our old Victorian house was and I've just stuck with that. I don't know what the modern equivalent is. So I'll get that in position. You might just be able to see that I've marked up on there. So I'll transfer those lines onto here. Then we'll mark up the hinge. Apologies, the legs are out. This is actually the first time I've done hollow core, kind of these budget doors, the moulded doors. Uh, they're actually quite easy to work with, they're very lightweight, uh, rather than the old big chunky solid wood ones that we were you know, used to at the last house. So what I've got uh, now is I can lie my story stick onto the door, and I'm just going to overshoot the end by 2 or 3 mil for the gap at the top of the door. should be the same at the bottom. I'll go along and transfer the marks onto the door. These doors have a block, a solid block, where you can fit your hardware for your handle, a lock block. The rest of it is obviously hollow. Now on the top it's marked and it says something or other, a code, and then the word lock on there, which basically means the lock is on this side, hence why the hinges are on that side. If I've got that right, yeah, so, so far so good. We've made sure that we're the right way up, the skinny rail at the top, the fat one is at the bottom. So now I've got this off and over here, I'm just going to put an X on the side of the door that the hinge is going in. Because if you're not careful, between here and outside, you'll end up twisting the door one way or the other to get through a door, 
gets through the hallway and then you'll end up cutting out and routing out the wrong side of the door. So these are the tools we need. We've got Robin's jig, uh, we've got a clamp and we've got a router. I only need a little router like this. You could even use a cordless one. So this is the template bit that's in there. The idea being that we run the bearing of that router bit along and around this aperture and that will set our spacing nicely for our hinge. So we'll get that one on. We've already got it marked up. So it's marked up. We know we're coming in from the right side because we've got our apps there. So we'll whip this out and then I'll show you what we're gonna do with the corners. One little thing I didn't mention is you've got to set the height of your bit to be correct. So we've got our plate here. If you just stick that straight on there, you can see the amount of the blade which is protruding above here. So you can just offer up your hinge and whatever thickness your hinge is will be at the top of that blade. So we know we're good. If you had a really thick hinge, you would just extend that up. Uh, so it is out quite a bit on the router. So if you would routing one like we're gonna to have to do the lining in a minute uh, we would back this all the way back down so it's just the three mil or two mil of the blade showing uh, not the bearing so we'll do the other side and then we'll square up these Okay, so we've got our hinge there. It's a normal 75, 76mm hinge. And we're gonna offer it up in a minute, but first of all, because it's a router bit, it's round, and we've gotta take off these corners. You can get a special little corner chisel, or you can cheat and just use a sharp knife because you have got a blunt chisel. Let's see how it fits. It, they've been pretty tight so far, so we might need to shave a little bit off. So as you can see, that is super flat along there. We'll tidy it up a little bit before we paint. Okay, so you've seen the fancy way of doing it with the jig. That's how you should do it, and you shouldn't have your architrave on, so you can just put the jig on here and do exactly the same thing. In this case, I'm gonna be doing my old school method. Ignore the mouse in the background. So on here, I've offered up my hinge already. I've marked it, I've scored around with a sharp blade, and now I'm just gonna route out. I started, but I didn't want you to miss out, so here we go. Now hopefully, for your sake, you're not trying to man a camera at the same time and change settings whilst using a router, and therefore you wouldn't have just scooped out the top of your cut, but never mind. Uh, we'll tidy out with the blade and we'll see how we do. Right, moment of truth. Ignore this. Luckily these are going to get painted, so we can just fill that. So obviously I need to sharpen my pencil because we're a little bit loose there. It's about a millimetre oversized. What I would say is by setting the router at the right depth, it means that this is absolutely spot on. Unlike if you're trying to do it with a chisel, you know, you, it takes a bit of trial and error to get that right. So there we go, that's done. I'll check the top one, get these on the door, and then we can off the door. Okay, time to install. Hopefully this goes to plan. We'll probably have to take it out two or three times. So there's your pre-warning. It's not gonna just slot in like a jigsaw. I use these little bag shims, airbags. 
Uh, these are little ones, and they've I think I bought them five or six years ago, and they've held up just fine. So no need to buy the fancy trend ones. If you're doing lots as well, self-centering bits are great, unless it's hidden in the workshop and you can't find it, in which case I've just got three mil bit here. And I'm just going to put one screw in first just to get things sorted. So these are such a lightweight doors, so I've only gone with two hinges, but ordinarily three would be the way to go. Right, so we're in. Bump it up a bit. Okay, so that's a screw, just a central screw, top and bottom, moment of truth, but after you've done a few, you soon realise that it never goes to plan. So we're not a million miles off. Let's check the width. That's better. But what we have got is a decent amount of room up here for us to be able to go up and therefore pull it off the floor. And now we're stuck in the room. Great. Right, I've just set that hinge in a little bit more just to bring the top across, which in turn should lift the door off the bottom. Chops away. We're good there. Plain do anything off that leading edge. Don't think it needs anything. Gap at the top still a little bit more than I'd like, but I think that's more to do with the lining being a little bit off than anything. Once the door, door stops are all in, that should look just fine. Although it could go up a little bit might find that once those two last screws are in, it'll pull it across a little bit more, which will send that up. Anti-slam mechanism. Perfect. Okay, well, there you go. You can see we've got nearly all of them done. There's two more to do, utility and the little toilet. Um, I've gone ahead and installed handles and latches on a couple of them, but I will work my way around. Whether I get to do that in a video, I don't know. They're fairly simple. And um, obviously, you've still got door stops to go in and then a whole load of painting. So still lots to do, but I tell you what, this really helped. This one's the bigger one. Didn't need it on this job, but at least it's there should we do any external timber doors or heavier stuff. Um, so huge thank you to Robin. I'll leave a link, I'll get a link off him somewhere and put it down in the description. Don't be scared to try something different. Uh, you might have used a hammer and chisel for years, but actually uh, a small handheld router can be really inexpensive and it's such a useful tool, whether it's just putting a bull nose on something, a little bit of edging, or in this case, doing some hinges. So you, you could get away without doing the jigs if it was just a few different uh, bits of hardware, but being able to set the depth of that and get it really accurate really pays off. So I'm gonna leave it there. If you wanna find out any of the tools that we use, as well as the jigs, we'll put them down in the link in the description below. Uh, and I'm sure you've all got better methods. So share it with everyone else. Let us know uh, how you do it. Uh, I know someone on Instagram said that they bought two of these jigs and just put a strapping of plywood between the two and then they could just put the whole thing on the door and zip it through and I guess the more doors you do if you do this day in day out you'll have all sorts of tricks but anyway we'll leave it there thank you for watching remember if you can do it yourself and we'll see you next time